Hey, welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're about to do a series on semi-automatic welding. And there's so many different ways of doing it. We're going to do a series, part one, through probably uh, about ten different parts. But I want to start off with the, the basics uh, behind all this and why you would even do it. You've watched as I hold a TIG torch and show you the right angle and introduce the filler material. Well, what if you get some production runs or you get long runs and, and you get tired? Now, hand feeding TIG filler material, you can only go so far before you have to grab another wire and continue on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an introduction to a wire feeder, a hand wire feeder. Now there's all kinds of attachments and everything else so I want to break it down and, and when you go to this this is this is a TIG cold wire feeder it's made by CK. Um, anyway this this unit is a WF5 and I know that I've gotten a lot of questions on this about the accessories and what comes with it what doesn't come with it so I'm going to break it down. Here's how I understand it right now if you if you go to purchase one of these you buy it like a, uh, a stripped down car. You don't get all the extras with it. You get exactly what you purchase. This is a wire feeder, a cold wire feeder, and it has some functions that we're going to go through it in this section right now. And if you want to do something like a handheld pendant, and that's the term that I use, this is basically replacing what I do dabbing. And all I do is pull the trigger, and the wire comes out. And I set it at a preset speed, and I can pulse it. I can have it retract after I finish my weld. And this little unit right here is a separate attachment. So just know that when you buy this, you gotta buy the attachments to match your needs. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hook this up. And uh, I actually took the cover off earlier and I see that there's some rollers in there. I happen to have some filler material that's 030 diameter. Uh, so it's going to fit in there, and the rollers in there allow you, I believe, to go all the way up to 045, and we'll look on the inside here in just a few minutes. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hook this up and uh, join me, if you will. All right. Well, we slide this in position, and there's a nut back here we'll show you in just a few minutes that we tighten down. And this is the electrical control. Tighten this into position. And this portion is complete. Okay, so I just I pull this pin, set it down here just for the moment, but I happen to have some um, 030 diameter filler. And so I put it on here. Hold hold this in place. And then I try to feed the wire right through the center here. And you can see it. I'm, I'm putting it into the small groove. That small groove will handle the 030 wire diameter. And it's almost like, uh, it's almost like feeding wire into that other welding process. That, uh, I think they call that MIG. But uh, basically the same thing. I've got a single set of rollers. And I, uh, I hand feed it a little bit through there. And then go ahead and I'll clamp it down. And just a little thumb tightening there. So I've got pretty good pressure on it. So at this point, we're, we're pretty well set to go. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna hit the wand here, push the button and get some wire speeds going. Okay, now that I've got the wire in place and it's threaded through just a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine on. And I'm gonna turn the wire speed up. I have no idea what speed it is, but I'm gonna watch for the wheel to see if it uh, starts taking. And it is. And in TIG welding, I certainly won't be welding at this speed. So I'll get the wire to come out and then I'm going to set the speed to what I think it should be for what I'm about to weld. Okay, there we are. This actually has a retraction in it so I can adjust that to be a minor retraction or a major, but uh, got a little bit of stick out here. Now I'm going to uh, go through the functions of this particular machine. 
Okay, now you saw me earlier turn the on-off switch on. Okay, now what I have here is a, is a wire speed. I don't know what wire speed I need right now, so I'm just going to fine-tune it and, and actually try to imagine dabbing, how much I'd consume by dabbing. And so I'm going to set the wire speed. I also have a function here called delay and retract. So when, when you start to weld and you light the arc, you like to get your eyes all set into place, see the puddle, and then when you push this trigger, it's whatever delay you put in there. So if you want a one second delay or a two second delay just to get everything in rhythm and get ready, that's what you do. So I'm going to set that just for about a one second delay. Now there's a retract function in here and this retract, it's got a number one through nine. And I'm just going to put, I'm going to put one in just to see how much it will retract. So this is what it looks like. And I let off and you can watch it comes back. So let's try it again. Okay, so I, I'm welding, I let off, and it comes back. Okay, so uh, we've got the retraction part of it. Now I want to get into, uh, this thing is called drive and dwell, and it says continuous. Well, when we're running continuous, it's just very much like if you're just continually adding the filler material. But what if you want to dab it? What if you want to put in a little pulsation to it? Well, that's what this is all about. So I've got this, uh, this pulse feature on here. So turn the pulse feature on and watch what happens. See this little red light? You see the wire? It's pulsing. Now it's probably shoving more wire than I need, but I'm going to play with it and I'm going to get a nice little pulse going and you're going to get a close-up of it here shortly. So I'm just going to run a little uh, two inch, three inch piece of metal, just steel, just to get things going. And uh, I'll join you back over here, I'll get my gear on. Okay, you can see what I did here is a, just a small weld, just an inch and a half weld. This is the intro for this machine. We're going to we're going to get some pretty sophisticated parts in here. We're going to some very long runs, so we're going to be running 12 inches, 18 inches, and you're going to see some parts and, and some more procedures. But uh, what I did here was I just took 16 gauge material. You got to still provide your own welding machine, your own torch. It's an air cooled torch, uh, 16 gauge steel. 1 16th tungsten DC pointed argon at 15 CFH. So it just did a very nice job. And it's kind of funny because I have a habit of trying to dab the filler and it's already dabbing for me. It's already got the pulsing built in. So uh, I'm just going to practice a little bit more at it and, uh, and I'll join you next time. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.